When a person who is a compulsive eater overcomes their eating compulsion, they don't stop eating. They continue to eat, but they eat in a different way. It's not driven and it's healthier. With regards to our mind, the mind has a certain drive to find meaning. That drive, I think, is in some way intrinsic to the image talk circuits themselves, but also um, is linked to feel. If we can't, uh, I, I define feel as emotional body sensation. When the mind finds meaning, you'll find a smile on your face or a rosiness in your chest or a frisson, a kind of uh, uh, ripple of pleasant excitement through your body. Uh, when the mind fails to find meaning, when the mind is confused, muddled, spinning to no avail, then you'll find in the body sensations of fear and tear and uh, impatience, agitation, and so forth. So the drive to find meaning involves, I believe, a certain intrinsic drive in the image talk circuits to um, establish pattern and then uh, some juice in the body, particularly with regards to the pleasure associated with finding answers and the discomfort in the body associated with being confused or not having answers, especially fear and sadness flavors. So some combination of forces within feel image talk drive us to have meaning. We can train ourselves into equanimity with don't know. It's a systematic training. The medieval Christians called it docta ignorantia, or trained ignorance. Um, the ancient Greeks called it epiki, epoche, in their pronunciation, meaning to suspend. Suspend what? Suspend the need to have answers. In Zen, it's called don't know mind. This can be systematically trained, meaning that one can systematically work through the forces in image, talk, and feel uh, that drive us to have meaning. Now, why is, why is it important to do that? Well, I would say several reasons. For one thing, inevitably, we will be faced with the inability to find meaning. Uh, every new thing we know raises new questions. So our don't know grows faster than our do know. By our, I mean the human species. So um, we have to uh, accept the fact that we'll always be facing don't know. And in fact, a major theme in modern mathematics and modern physics is uh, the limits of what even can be known, or at least known in certain ways. Gödel's uh, undecidabil undecidability and incompleteness uh, theorems, um, Heisenberg uncertainty uh, in um, uh, physics and so forth, po point us directly to don't know. In fact, uh, a point could be made that um, uh, the stability of the known universe in that it depends on Heisenberg uncertainty depends on God's equanimity with don't know. <laughs> anyway, so sooner or later, uh, we and probably God uh, are faced with don't know. I'm being somewhat metaphorical and humorous, I think you understand. On the theoretical le level and then on the practical level, hey, we're going to get old. We're going to, and as we get old, our mental faculties deteriorate. I, I can see for myself, I'm 65, and 
I can see it's downhill. Um, you know, I'm past my intellectual peak. Um, but that doesn't freak me out because um, I have uh, made friends with don't know. I've made friends with my own impending stupidity. There was a famous uh, 20th century mathematician that I like a lot. He was quite eccentric, uh, named Paul Erdős, E-R-D-O-S is how you write that name. And he wanted to have put on his gravestone, I don't know if they actually did it, but what he said, uh, put on my gravestone is, um, at last I'm not getting stupider anymore. So I can see I'm sort of getting, gradually getting stupider, uh, but that's okay. So theoretically and practically, sooner or later we have to face don't know. There is a need to deal with the need to know. And fortunately, there is a way of doing that. The other reason um, why it's good to be able to deal with don't know is that as you remember on the metaphor of the compulsive eater, when uh, the compulsive eater has worked through their compulsion to eat, they don't stop eating. In fact, they eat in a much more fulfilling new way. When a human being works through the need to have answers, they don't stop having answers. They start having answers in a deeply fulfilling and radical new way. That's why uh, the Christians in the Middle Ages and the Greeks in classical antiquity, at least some of them, cultivated this. And it's the basis also for uh, the Zen koan practices like what's the sound of one hand and so forth. This new way of knowing, we have a name for it. We call it wisdom function. So both because we don't want to suffer due to the fact that don't know is inevitable. And also on the positive side, when we uh, work through the, the need to know, we get to know in a radical new way called insight, or if you wish, wisdom, or even in its more ex most extreme form, enlightenment. For these reasons, there is a need to work through the need to know.